He says to me, Gabriel, you have a good head, man. You hear what's happening with our farmers? You see what the country is going and so on? And you want to tell me about clothes? Well, let's go, let's go. Uh, he, never, he never saw the guy. The next time I saw the guy was at Lucy's Memorial. He never saw Cumberland again. Never saw Cumberland. But I'll also say one more thing about him because he was a mentor in the way through uh, Irving and I, and he was someone who really meant well. He may not have been equipped in every way with all that he needed. But he had a sincerity, and I believe if we pursue things with a sincerity, we will make progress. Because that's what we have done with one Cassius. We pursue things with heart, with sincerity. So, Foreign Affairs, in 2000, March, placed the Dorf government delegation in the French Quarter in New Orleans, which is the most expensive section of New Orleans, five, seven, eight hundred dollars a night, US. And what was interesting is that Foreign Affairs would give the ministers what they say in Creole, Bulo, rolls of cash. And I said to Lucy, why don't they have a credit card? Where you can get a credit card account so you can know when they spend it on popcorn, matinee, cinema, uh, and so on and so forth. They, they would give them their per diem in advance, rolls of, of cash. So when we went in and Lucy found out it was about 70 a night per suite, the people there included also um, Austria, who was Minister of State. Reginald Austin. Rosie says, that's ridiculous. Who did it? I said, I mean, the foreign affairs, I didn't do that. I flew down from Washington. The lobbyist in Washington from the university was a friend and colleague of mine, Chapin Wilson. Um, so Rosie said, no, I'm not going to pay that. Gabo, um, you're the government's lawyer right now appointed. Go talk to them. It's not the government's lawyer. But he appointed me and I went and so on. Now I have two or three voices. It's a voice that I use in court when I'm doing a brief. <laughs> If I'm doing a brief in the circuit court, I use one voice. If I'm doing a, court, a brief before the Court of Appeals, the Supreme Court of Maryland, I do another voice. If I'm in a dorm and by Seymour at night to get a chicken leg and salt, I mean, do another voice. <laughs> and I'm at UE and I'm going to try to figure out which one I use <laughs> so I can give you the best recitation of what happened. Is it the voice and the accent? The voice and the accent? Well, you know, voice accents in me. Accent. So, I went up to the concierge and I spoke to the lady. I said, uh, <clears throat> My name is Gabriel Christian, I'm Prime Minister of uh, Douglas. Attorney. We need to get this resolved right away. It's a diplomatic incident here, we can't get it resolved. The actual numbers are not what was given initially, and we need to get this reduced. Like this is that, and that. So Ruth is on the edge of listening to me and so on. And eventually, what I did was I reduced the three suites to one major suite and a sub suite. I cut him back from 750 to 425. It was a splendid piece of work. <laughs> and when I turned to Rosie, Rosie put his hand on his head. I thought I had done good. Rosie put his hand on his head and walked away like this. And he tells the delegation, with, no, I thought we were in trouble. No, we're in real trouble. <laughs> if the hotel charged us that kind of money for these rooms, after Gabriel was talked like that, how much am I going to be able to have to pay? <laughs> Until he laughed until he cried. You know? And so he was a guy who was always looking for the for the humor in a rather difficult life of running a small country where the income equation versus the expense equation is not always balanced. And he went up to the room. And when I repaired to my place, I stayed on the campus because on the campus you got a room for $45 US a night, which is my speed. And I like that speed. I left Rosie sleeping on the couch. He put Austria in the bed, Matt Dell, the other journalist in another bed, and he was sleeping on the couch as an order. And I popped up his head with a pillow, and I left him and went about my business and came back that evening where he signed the MOU for the uh, tourism school, which maybe one day somehow we can have, because shortly after that he passed away. And with his death, that went. But I share these things, I didn't share all of that in there, but the University of New Orleans is mentioned in me and Dr. Schillingman, who remember that we invited the Chancellor, Dr. Gregory O'Brien, at the Diaspora Symposium, where young Roosevelt Skelton and young Prince Henderson attended, and all of that is on tape. All of that again is on tape. It's important for it to be on tape because you see, there's going to be a time when we are not here. There's going to be a time when we return to our maker. And if we are to be a competent people, if we are to be a learning people, if we are to be progress, we need to have a sound national narrative. 
when I see young boys and girls who are walking up and down in Dominica with their pants below their what have you and smoking and carrying on and drinking, I have to ask myself, what is the quality of our discourse? What are we discussing? It used to be when I was speaking to Simpson Gregoire, we would have panel discussions, we would have debates, we would have debating society, society is rather plural, we would have literary clubs, Domini literary club, Donald and so on. Every day now it seems we have socialization, it's on the basis of some jump up. Have you reduced the quality of our civilization to Bota and what they say in the vernacular, Siwo? We will not make progress, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I humbly suggest, unless we can get back to that seriousness, that which is considered gravitas in Latin, where we can have a joke, because the same I will, I will, without offending my teachers here and my elders here, will tell you that fast forward back to, so I talked about March of New Orleans and May when he came to the Qatar Embassy, September Georgetown School of Foreign Service. I'm saying to Guruzi that the people from New Orleans are calling, nobody's answering. Nanton cannot be found. Guruzi says he's interested in cricket, he's the chief of staff. So they were calling me because I brought him down there. And he said to me, and it's in search of Eden too. In war I have with me, you guys want to drive big cars. And say, say, cookie woman. It's a very, very rude thing to say in front of Miss Levy, but I have to say, because that's what he said. He was a very frank person. The pleasures of the flesh had taken over, and the bota had taken over sensibility. And he was at his wit's end. That was the last time I saw him. We went back home and died. Today, Abraham Lincoln has been dead 150 years. But you can read the blow by blow, minute by minute account of his assassination, what he did in the White House, how he struggled for the 30th Amendment to free slaves. We can read that to the point that Steven Spielberg can do a movie, Lincoln, that if you look at that movie, you think that Samuel D. Lewis is the Lincoln. That's how particular and meticulous the record keeping is. You can go to the Washington National Museum and you can see General Grant's horse standing. The real horse. Here and everything, eyes that well, I'm not sure it's a real eyes, the same eyes. The taxidermists have preserved the horse. The saddle is polished, the sword is burnished. You can see the first American dishwasher, the second one, the first washing machine, the second one. That's what we see. And so when we see these things in advanced civilizations, we cannot be craven, we cannot be inattentive to our duty, we cannot forget our country, we want the same for our country. We want our country to, because we are capable people. I'm sitting next to Dr. Whittington of Jamaica, PhD in neuroscience, head of the Department of Natural Sciences, Morgan State University, one of the best engineering schools in Baltimore. And he turns to me and he says, Christian, you're from Dominica, aren't you? I say, yes. He says, do you know my best science students are from Dominica? They're all women. I said, that's amazing. He said, there's a girl called Tisai Grell. She's got five, she had all A's in her entire four years in chemistry. I got a full scholarship to do a PhD at MIT. Now, anybody here knows MIT? Have you ever heard of MIT? Okay. I know I'm among the learning. I went to my phone right away at the dinner table. We were there with the ambassador, the Prime Minister of Curacao, and I googled the name, and what did I find? The Baltimore Sun, which is the paper of record. And if you don't believe me, you can try it now. Frank Cover of the Baltimore Sun. It's a side rail, a convent rail, all A's, every single subject through four years. Best student in the history of Morgan State. Let's hear it for the Convent High School. And he said, there are four more. There are four more like that. And I was exhilarated. I did a, a video, I put a name, I tried to find who her parents were. I found out her father is Grail from Harlem. Yeah. And so, to side, by the way, is an Ethiopian name. Because Grail, of course, coming from the Black Power Movement, and I will talk about that. But what really took 
me on the other side of my exhilaration was there are many more such stories. One of the best engineers, PhD electronics engineering, Bernardi Toh, Texas Instruments in China every other week, making the best scientific calculators in the world. His father was the cobbler of Bo C right there on Boyd's Avenue. When I come from school, grammar school, Irvin, you knew the cobbler right there, Bo C right from Fabric. Ito. Tronada's uh, brother was Tronada, Calypsonia. I share these things because we are a majestic people. Of course, our brother Bo is laughing because we only used to go on the power and it, um, what we used to eat over here. Anything you can find? Endless thing. <laughs> and so if we could, from a country of modest means, this is my analysis, because this book is not about me. What Irvin and I have done is not about us. We're not involved in a sort of narcissism that has consumed the leader of the quote-unquote free world of late. When Charlottesville happened and we asked him about what happened in Charlottesville and he was finished talking garbage, he came back and said, do you know I have the biggest, a big home in Charlottesville and a big winery? My word, my mom. Your woman has just been killed by a Nazi. And he tells us he has a big wine. I'm not sure whether he drinks too much of it. But that's another story. So the whole idea is, how is it that we have the San Rafaels of this world, the Irving Andres, the Emmanuel, Errol Emmanuel, Dr. Christian, Ms. Thomas here, truly Christian, my niece, who is the daughter of my only the first Dominican vet, maybe the second person to graduate from, science, from India, that was a Christian. Truly was valedictorian at the convent, and rumor has it, and I believe it can be confirmed, that she was first in the class at convent, Miss Levy. And she was a head girl. So around her also truly, because she's very shy. So you have that be multiplied over and over again. The challenge we had, we have rather, that the Dominican Academy of Arts and Sciences, led by the distinguished Raghun Rufier of blessed memory and our first president, President Emeritus, Dr. Clinton, is how do we couple that talent together? Because that which Dominica has is replicated in Jamaica and in Trinidad. You see it in the Caribbean the diaspora. And our challenge is how do we couple that together so in Paris? How do we cobble that together, early man? How do we cobble that together, Sam? And build institutions that can allow us to return to replenish the pool from whence we came. Because if the traffic is only in one direction, what are we doing? We actually are engaged in behavior analogous to the farmer, cuts the brush, fills the soil, plants the seed, tends the crop, half his time is upon us, and he goes to sleep, and when he comes back the next morning, someone else is half his sleep. We'll be caught in a constant cycle of poverty. So the whole idea behind Commandante Pinares, and I'll tell you a little bit about his genesis, was not simply to talk about having gone to Cuba. <coughs> that in and of itself has no intrinsic value to the future of the army. You want a trip, you want a trip, come back, who cares? I want to tell you that we did the book, I did it, we did the introduction, Juan Casi Press produced it, because we wanted to have everyone understand that in 1961 when I was born, the Caribbean was going through its birth pangs, at least the British West Indies was. From 57 to 62, we had the British West Indian Federation. We were very fortunate to have three leaders of the highest caliber in the three leading nations. Sir Grantley Adams, Prime Minister or Premier of Barbados. Norman Washington Manley, Chief Minister of Jamaica, First Class Honours Oxford, hero of World War I, military medal in the Royal Artillery, would have been commissioned but for the color of his skin, although he was what my father would say highly, highly colored. High color. My father would say highly colored. <laughs> and Dr. Eric Williams, First Class Honours, PhD Oxford, author of Capitalism and Slavery. Three great leaders. But Boston Manti told the Jamaican people, and my Jamaican clients have confirmed this much, these people from the small islands, if we go, and Dr. Shillingford will stand up and be my um, primary witness this evening, if we go into independence, Dr. Shillingford, can you tell us what they said? What Boston Manti, demagogue, the poor Jamaicans was? 
Rosamanti told me he spoke to mostly the lower class. Small island people are coming to get your land and to take your women. <laughs> well, if you can't take your women, you maybe talk about people like Dr. Schilling, but it was quite good looking. It was quite good looking. And still is. He was called Harry Belafonte back in those days. But when the Jamaican people heard that, I understand that the Jamaicans who were better educated voted for the Federation. So we have to give them that credit. But those in the countryside who were in the majority voted against it. Jamaica left. Dr. Williams at Woodford Square. I don't think uh, the manager of the standing room only dental surgery in Rosa will uh, confront me on this, but Dr. Williams went to a place called Woodford Square. Richard was there? I don't think Richard was there. And he said, one from 10 zero. 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 That's what they call new maps. But, um, he then left, or Jimmy Trina left, and the whole thing broke up. But some may confirm, I simply will know that West Indies overseas are more united than here. I'll give you a little joke. My children first came back to Dominic in 2004. They said, Daddy, where can we go get the um, Jamaican beef patty and the dal puri? I said, we're not the Trinidad and Jamaica at the same time, you know. <laughs> because, because in their mind, we had all the West Indian organizations where there's a fusion of the jerk chicken, beef patty, the dark puree and so on. Here we have Kalalu and mountain chicken. And when I tell my friends, they laugh at me and so on. But they just assumed that it was all one thing. one thing. And so there's a oneness that we realize when we are overseas. Unfortunately, we do not realize here in our region because we want to have so many captains of one ship. And of course, we know that doesn't work. We do not suppress that insularity. So in the 60s, I grew up in that ferment. Our father, who was a Christian, had been a member of the London Book Club since the 1930s. 